Hi, I'm Sean Duggan. In this episode of the Lightroom Viewfinder, we're going to pay a visit to the Island of Lost Files to address one of the most common questions I get from new Lightroom users. Why are some of my files missing in Lightroom, and how do I get them back? Although these vanishing files can seem mysterious, there's always a logical explanation, and in this video I'll take a look at the reasons why Lightroom sometimes loses track of images, as well as show you how to track down those missing files and get your catalog back in order. I'll also make some organizational and workflow recommendations that'll help prevent files from getting lost in the future. Before we get into just what causes files to go missing, it's important to know that behind the scenes in Lightroom is a powerful database that keeps track of all of the images you've imported into your catalog. For every photo in the catalog, there's a database entry containing information about the file, a thumbnail version of the photo, and a larger preview image, as well as a reference to the location where the file is stored. The actual image files that the catalog references are not contained within the Lightroom program. The catalog is simply an inventory of the files that are stored on a hard drive. Much like a traditional library catalog contains information about the books and tells you where you can find them on the library shelves. If Lightroom cannot find the actual files in the location where it thinks that they should be, then it will show question marks on the folder icon and the image thumbnails, and it will display a message telling you that the file is offline or missing when you view a larger preview or try to work on the image in the develop module. The most common reasons why Lightroom loses track of images is that the files or the folder containing them have either been renamed or moved to a new location outside of Lightroom. The other reason for missing files may be that an external hard drive the images are stored on is not currently connected to the computer. In that last scenario, it's easy to determine if this is the problem. Check the folders panel on the left side of the library module to see if the drive containing the missing files is actually connected. If it's not connected, the drive name will be dimmed down. In this case, the fix is pretty simple. Just connect the hard drive where those images are stored, and once it is recognized, Lightroom will see that the files are there and remove those vexing question marks. When files or folders that are a part of your Lightroom catalog are renamed or moved using the Mac Finder or the Windows File Explorer, Lightroom loses track of them because the new file name or location does not match the database record. The obvious solution, of course, is to only rename or move files that are a part of your Lightroom catalog from within Lightroom. That way the program always knows where the files are. But even the best laid plans may not prevent files from getting lost now and then. So for those cases, let's take a look at how you can track down missing files. There are two possible scenarios that will affect how you locate the misplaced images. Scenario number one is the easiest to deal with. In this case, you remember moving or renaming the files and you know where to find them. Scenario number two is trickier. In this situation, it's all a fog, and you have no idea where the files are. First, we'll consider scenario number one. In the grid view of the library module, right-click on the folder that has a question mark on it and choose Find Missing Folder. In the dialog that appears, navigate to where you know the moved or renamed folder is. In this case, I had earlier renamed this folder to add the word Evening to the folder name. To update Lightroom with a new name for this folder, I would simply select the folder and click the Choose button. Alternately, I could also choose to rename the folder in the Finder or the Explorer view back to what is recorded in the Lightroom catalog. In either case, Lightroom would now be able to see that folder again, and the question marks will be removed. If you've moved a folder, there are two ways you can proceed. Either relink to the folder at its new location using the Find Missing Folder dialog, or, using the Finder or Explorer, move the folder back to the original location where Lightroom thinks it should be. When relinking to a folder that's been moved, you have to consider whether the new location is really where that folder should be within the overall catalog. Keeping a well-organized and logical folder structure is an important part of good catalog maintenance, and I'll discuss this in more detail later in the video. If you have an individual file that is missing, instead of an entire folder, Click on the question mark in the upper right corner of the image thumbnail. The message that appears will list the last known location of that file. This can be very useful in helping you track down a missing image. Click the Locate button and navigate to where you know the file is. By default, it will take you to the last known folder for this file, which is usually a good place to start. In this case, I've simply renamed the file and I remember what the name was, 
so once I find it, I can select it and relink it to the Lightroom catalog. If you are dealing with a situation involving a changed file name, Lightroom will ask you to confirm this. Alternately, you can also just go back to the Mac Finder or the Windows File Explorer view and change the name back to what it originally was. As with folders, if a file has been moved, you need to decide if the new location makes sense for where that file should be stored. If it does, go ahead and relink to the file. If not, then use the Finder or the Explorer to move the file back to where it should be, and as long as the file name is the same, Lightroom will see it and update the status of the file. Now we'll move on to the more problematic scenario number two, where a folder or a file has been renamed or moved to another location outside of Lightroom, but you have no idea where it is. In this situation, you're going to have to play detective to track it down. First, let's consider a missing folder. If the previous folder name already had a descriptive term or a name that contained the date the images were taken, then you can use this information as possible clues to help you find the missing folder. Right-click the missing folder icon in the library module and choose Find Missing Folder. You can use the search field in this dialog to enter a search term that might reveal the whereabouts of the folder. This is where logical and consistent folder naming habits really pay off. Since my folder names always contain the date the images were made, as well as some basic location or event-specific description words, searching for either the six-digit date number or a word that might be part of the folder name helped me to find the missing folder. Even though both the location and the folder name had been changed, the name still had a word that referenced the location, as well as the six-digit date number, and this information was key to finding it. In this example, I'll relink to the folder at its current location. But the folder is in the wrong place. It's nested inside another Iceland folder from a different day. From within Lightroom, I can move the folder up one level and place it inside the main Iceland trip folder. Now the folder has been returned to its proper location and this change has been updated in the Lightroom catalog. If it's a specific file you're trying to locate, click on the question mark in the thumbnail and make a note of what the previous file name and location were. Then click the Locate button. First, try searching for the last known file name. If the file has been moved outside of Lightroom, but the file name is the same, the search should turn it up pretty quickly. But if the file has been both renamed and moved outside of Lightroom, then finding it may be a bit trickier. Try searching your system for information about the file that is a constant, no matter where it may be located or what the new file name may be. The most obvious piece of information that should still be the same is the date the file was created. Use your operating system search command to look for files created on this date. Of course, a search like this will also turn up all the other files from that day, but if you scan the list of found files and look for changed file names, chances are good that the missing file will turn up. The different examples of file search and rescue missions that I've explored in this video underscore the importance of good organizational habits, including how you name your files and folders and where you store them. So to finish up, let's review a few important workflow practices that can help you keep your image archive and your Lightroom catalog well organized. First, get your photo collection organized. Having images mixed in with other files and spread across multiple locations on the computer's internal drive and several external drives is a sure recipe for confusion. Try to set up a hard drive and folder structure for your files that is reserved specifically for your photo archives. And of course, do make sure that your main system hard drive and your image archive is backed up regularly to at least one other location on dedicated backup drives. Next, develop a logical system for your folder names and be consistent. I use a six-digit number for the date the photos were taken, followed by a few words that describe the event or the location where the images were made. This works well for my archive of original images because the folder names contain important date and subject information which can be useful for finding images. For some photo projects, other folder names may be more effective. Give some thought to what type of folder names will work best for your image archive. As with folder names, Using a consistent naming system for the image files is also important. For my personal photos, the file name for the original images contains my last name, the date the image was captured, and the original four-digit number assigned by the camera. In most cases, this root name is never changed, only added to when different versions are created. 
For instance, I use a dash M to denote a master file that has Photoshop layers and a dash W to indicate a file that's sized for the web. I don't include event or location information in the file names. For that, I rely on keywords, which is a much more efficient means of recording content-specific information about the photos. The file naming system that I use works well for me, but your needs may be different. With client-specific work, for instance, you may want to include the client's name or a job number in the file name. The main thing is that whatever archive folder structure and naming scheme you decide on, be consistent with it, and this will help you keep your catalog in order. By the way, if you're interested in an excellent book about good practices for creating and maintaining a well-organized image catalog, I highly recommend The Dam Book, Digital Asset Management for Photographers, by Peter Krogh. Last but not least, if you do need to move files or folders around, or rename them, use Lightroom to do this. For any changes you make to the folder and file names, as well as where the folders are stored on the hard drive, the database will be updated, allowing the program to keep track of the correct names and locations for all of the files in the catalog. And if you do need to move folders around outside of Lightroom, just remember where you put them and then relink to them using the Find Missing Folder dialog. Following these basic workflow practices for file and folder naming and managing your Lightroom catalog will help keep your image archive in order and prevent your photos from washing ashore on the island of lost files. Thanks for watching the Lightroom Viewfinder. I'm Sean Duggan and I hope this episode was helpful to you. If you're interested in taking your image making to the next level and immersing yourself in a remarkable photography adventure on an incredibly beautiful island in the North Atlantic, join me in the summer of 2013 for creative discoveries in Iceland.